The UK has standardized around one type of three pin plug. So just why is there a completely different style two pin plug in British bathrooms? And why doesn't it have an earth pin? Surely that's more dangerous with all the water in the bathroom. Well, like many UK electrical standards, it's a well thought out solution to provide the maximum protection. But just why is it the shape it is? Well, that's a two pin standard that goes back to the start of the 20th century. When electricity came to British homes in the late 19th century, most people wanted it for one thing, lighting. So there was little provision for electrical outlets. The first plugs were simply devices that connected to light sockets. A light socket above the dinner table could be repurposed to attach a toaster or a kettle, for example. But soon people wanted dedicated sockets to plug in devices, which led to initial standards that were steadily refined between 1915 and 1930. Today, people in Britain are very familiar with the standard three pin plug. So the British standard at the time might seem very odd. There were five different plug sizes for devices with different amp ratings. The smallest was for devices that used up to two amps. The next was for five amp devices, then a 10 amp plug, a larger plug for a 15 amp rating, and finally a 30 amp plug. The different sizes meant it was impossible to connect something that required too much power into a socket that couldn't deliver it. But of course, it also meant you never had the correct socket near you for what you wanted. Today, the idea you might use a non-earthed unfused 230 volt 30 amp plug might seem slightly mad. Three pin plugs were available from 1911 and they eventually became their own standard, again with four different sizes for 2 amp, 5 amp, 15 amp and 30 amp devices. And at this point, most plugs didn't come with a fuse. Versions of these plugs can still be found in former British colonies such as India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Namibia, South Africa, Swaziland and Lesotho. The spacing of the live and neutral pins were different to the two pin sockets. This was on purpose so earth plugs didn't fit into unearthed sockets and vice versa. But it meant there were nine different types of plugs and sockets that could be used. In reality, only a small subset were common in British homes, but clearly it made sense to simplify and come up with something better. During the Second World War, the British government set around improving building standards for the inevitable reconstruction that would be necessary for a land fit for heroes. One part of this was creating a new electrical plug and socket standard. The result was the now common British three pin plug. There are many YouTube videos out there extolling the virtues of this design, and they're not wrong, it's a great design that included elements such as a small inspection hole designed to ensure the plug was earthed. The design included a fuse, so all those different plug sizes were now unnecessary, but the standard didn't require that appliances were sold with a plug. This, in my mind, was actually one of the failings of the three pin plug standard. It not only meant that there were shoddy jobs wiring up plugs by rank amateurs, but it also meant many appliances used the wrong fuse. Plugs were commonly sold installed with a 13 amp fuse and many people didn't bother changing it, which meant most appliances had a fuse that didn't correctly protect the device. All this changed when it became law to sell appliances with plugs already fitted. There were two additional plug socket combinations that were also defined at the time. At a time when clocks were commonly plugged in, a low amperage and low profile clock connector was specified and was sometimes installed over the mantelpiece. Having 230 volt 15 amp devices in the bathroom next to you in the bath is a recipe for disaster, which is why British rules state that sockets installed in a bathroom need to be at least two and a half meters away from a bath or a shower. Not many people have bathrooms that big, which is why you don't often see regular sockets in bathrooms. This worry of touching a large current with wet hands also extends to light switches. The switch has to sufficiently isolate you from an electrical shock, so you commonly see pull cords extending from the ceiling. Many UK homes ignore the problem completely by putting the switch outside the bathroom, although this means it's easy for someone to come along and turn the light off accidentally while you're in the shower, providing 
another lovely injury opportunity. The light switch provision is a UK rule, and other countries that use 230 volt circuits are perfectly happy to put light switches inside bathrooms. Electric shavers have been around since the end of the 19th century, so a special provision for shaver outlets was made in those 1940s rules, although interestingly the 1940s was when the first battery powered shavers started appearing. But just why is a non-earthed shaver socket allowed when you would think a regularly earthed socket would be the safer option? One part of it is that the shaver socket uses an isolation transformer. This isolates the mains voltage from the house ground, meaning that if you touch one of the outputs from the socket, you won't get a shock. If you touch both, you certainly will, and that's where the second part of the shaver socket design kicks in. It's limited to just 50 volt amps, or 50 watts. As the old adage goes, it's not the voltage that kills you, it's the current. 50 watts is a current of just 0.2 amps for 230 volt devices. This means that if the device comes in contact with water, it shouldn't kill you, but that's not a green light to go around testing it for yourself. The socket might have a fault which could lead to a seriously bad day. Don't do this. Many of those 1940s electric shavers used the old BS3725 amp plug, the one defined back in 1930. So the new standard kept the same size and spacing of the pins, meaning as long as your existing shaver didn't draw too much current, it should work perfectly well. What's more, this plug is surprisingly close to the two pin Euro plug shape and size. This hasn't been lost on those designing shaver sockets, so they've designed their sockets so they can also accept Euro plugs, and more modern designs also allow two pin US or Australasian plugs to be inserted. Given the sockets are connected to an isolation transformer, it's trivial to tap off two wires from this as well, one for 230 volts and one for 115 volts. This international compatibility has meant that you can find similar shaver sockets in hotels in many parts of the world. This has the advantage that if you're traveling and you've forgotten your international travel adapter, you can often as not plug your US Australasian or Euro USB adapter into a socket in the bathroom and get a quick phone charge. But again, be careful doing this with water around. Electricity and water don't mix. Also, given the current limit is very low, putting something that draws more power than a phone charger isn't advised like a laptop charger, a curling iron, or a hairdryer. Although curling irons and hairdryers are not something I've ever had to worry about. Shaver plugs won't fit into regular three pin sockets, even if you could get past the shutters that stop you doing silly things like trying to do that. Instead, you can use a shaver adapter, and there are even British standard rules defined for how these should work. They need shutters on them to reduce the risk of accidental shock, and will need to be limited with a one amp fuse, and need to have the words shavers only on them. Some people plug their electric toothbrushes into a shaver socket, but more and more toothbrushes and shavers are rechargeable, meaning there's less of a need for a dedicated electric socket in the bathroom. Will the shaver socket disappear, or will it be repurposed for something else? Only time will tell. Britain updated its sockets in the 1940s, but the currency also became a lot more logical when it went decimal in 1971. Learn more by watching the video on the right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.